Welcome to the DevOx UK here in London. Dear, yeah. yay! Yeah. Woo! Okay, so in Germany, we have a very famous uh, science entertainer. His name is uh, Professor Lesch. And uh, we start our talk while he's showing us uh, what we want to talk about today. Guten zusammen. Willkommen bei Lesch Cosmos. Unser Thema heute Deep Fakes, eine Technologie, mit der man praktisch jeden alles sagen lassen kann und zwar in Echtzeit. Das klappt ja wunderbar. Da kann ja mit dieser Technik kann ja jeder eine Wissenschaftssendung moderieren, sogar du. Ich und eine Wissenschaftssendung. Was für eine absurde <lacht> Idee. Aber wenn meine Stimme da nicht wäre, dann könnte man mich wirklich für dich halten. Und überleg mal, wenn man das woanders einsetzt, dann kann man damit ja eine völlig neue Dimension von Fake News schaffen. Und das macht mir echt Sorgen. Die Möglichkeiten zu manipulieren sind damit ja schier unendlich. Ja, man könnte zum Beispiel irgendeiner Politikerin oder einem Politiker irgendwas in den Mund legen. Also was ganz Fieses. Und eine andere Regierung nimmt das dann ernst und drückt vielleicht auf den roten Knopf. Wie so oft waren andere schneller als du und haben genau das gemacht. Pushing Deepfakes to the limit. Fake video calls with AI. Ja, yeah, this is the topic we want to talk about today. But who is we? Thomas. So, my name is Thomas Andres. I studied computer sciences and after my studies I joined uh, TNG Technology Consulting. Um, I've been there for 11 years now and together with Martin we've created lots of different prototypes including deepfakes but also robotics, gesture control and so on and so on. My name is Martin Furch. Um, I'm working for TNG uh, yeah, since uh, 15 years already and um, yeah, together with Thomas I founded the innovation hacking team. So we use some a percent of our working time to work on innovative projects and one we want to talk about today. And this guy. Yeah, my name's Jonas and you can see I also have like quite a few achievements down there. <laughs> Um, so originally I studied uh, games engineering, decided to do something actually useful. Now I'm doing deepfakes, so you see that worked out just fine. And uh, yeah, let's just yeah. start. So there is a history of uh, the topic in the topic of deepfakes since 2017, and uh, a lot of things are going on there. And uh, TNG was the world's first company realizing real-time deepfakes. And uh, so welcome to the journey of the evolution of deepfakes. So it was back in the days, autumn 2017, when a guy named Deepfaker published some videos on Reddit. And a few months later, the first news articles were published. So Motherboard Wise, they had the headline, AI-assisted fake porn is here, and we are all fucked. So, you may ask yourself, why are we... F so, yeah, the first videos which were published um, were uh, not safe for work videos, and there was a technology used, or a software used, which is called Deep Face Lab. So, it was published on GitHub in 2018, and it consists of several features. So, at first we have to say, you can take some uh, uh, video material and you can replace the face in this video. Everything was based on post video processing, which takes several hours, and it had a really wide distribution. So maybe you yeah, watched some uh, uh, deepfake videos already. Um, chances are high that 95% of all generated deepfakes video, deepfake videos are uh, yeah, generated by Deepface Lab. And it's open source. It was in the year 2019 when Professor Hao Li said, perfectly real deepfakes will arrive in six months to a year. And so we from the yeah, TNG Technology Consulting Innovation Hacking Team thought, well, challenge accepted. So we thought about it. Is it possible to create real-time deepfakes? The motivation behind that was, besides making them in real time, that we just didn't want to replace the face. We just thought about what if we can replace the whole head. 
it should work with any source actor. So imagine you're standing in front of a camera, you get filmed, and the whole head gets replaced, and the deep neural network, there is no need that it is trained on your specific face. And the idea was, if we can challenge that, if we can make them real time, we want to create awareness. Why do we want that? Carl Backstrom said, when a new technology like this comes along, the most dangerous period is when the technology is out there, but the public isn't aware of it. That's when it can be used most effectively. So this is the reason why I want to give this talk today. What do we want to talk about today? We want to have a look into the basic idea how deepfakes work. Then we have a look to our real-time implementation, how we push them to the limit. And after that, we want to talk about some cyber security stuff and uh, also audio deepfakes and so on. So, how do they work, basically? Yeah, so at the center of our deepfake implementation, we have something called autoencoder. An autoencoder is an AI which takes an image and creates another image from that, which looks exactly the same. Um, but it consists of two different neural networks. The first one is an encoder, which takes the image and brings it to a so-called latent space representation. So this is something like, yeah, you can imagine it like, uh, are the eyes open, is the mouth open, how are the lighting conditions, and so on and so on. So it breaks down the face into its most important facial expressions and uh, other stuff as well. And then there's a second part to it, and this is the so-called decoder. And the decoder is used given the latent space representation to recreate the image as it was before. So when we train this neural network, at the beginning it will be just random noise. But we can then do a pixel-wise comparison of the source image and the resulting image, and then we can yeah, just uh, train the neural network to recreate perfect images, which is pretty boring, but we can use it for if we use another trick. And this is, next slide, yeah. And here we can see we have now two different autoencoders. So one for Harald Lesch and the second one for another person, in this case it's Dirk Steffens. And now we can just take the input image, bring it to the latent space representation, but then take the decoder of the other person. So in this case, Dirk Steffens decoder. And then we will get a picture of Dirk Steffens, but with the facial expression of Harald Lesch. And this is how deepfakes work at the core. Now, when it comes to real-time deepfakes, uh, it, there's a bit more to do than just uh, doing the, deep uh, the, the autoencoder inference. So let's have a look at what we have to do here. First, of course, we have to take the video frame. That's pretty easy, actually. Um, now we have to do a face detection on the video image that we get, so that we have a rectangle of each face. Next, we'll have to do a segmentation, so we have to um, color every pixel which belongs to the face, and uh, the other ones, uh, we don't have to color them. And the next one would be to eradicate the old face, so that we don't get any ugly overlay problems. And the last step is then to take the auto-encoded image and put it where the old image was. Okay, now let's quickly go through every step. The first one is the face detection step. We have a demo here. So as you can see now, you can see Martin, and uh, Jonas can <laughs> join in as well. And we can do multiple face detections at the same time. It works also if Martin is turning his head, if somebody is uh, um, uh, covering his head with his um, hand, and so on and so on. And this is done on the CPU and works in real time. It was fast enough for us, so we said, okay, that's uh, all it takes, and we can just go ahead. The second one is the face segmentation. So given the area of the face, we now have to distinguish bet between pixels that belong to the face and pixels that don't belong to the face. So here is the result. 
Uh, it doesn't work perfectly in all lighting conditions, so this is also why you can see all this bluish colors on top of Martin's head, but in better lighting conditions it works quite well. And uh, it took us some, actually some time to get it running in this quality um, and also in real time. And this is what I want to talk about next. So here you can see the steps that are necessary. We just take two neural networks here. The first one is a so-called mobile network, which is a fast neural network, but with, which is normally used for classification. So given an image of a cat, it can say that this is a cat, or this is a dog, or this is a car, and so on and so on. But we can just cut away the last layers of this neural network, and then we can use the contextu contextual knowledge that the mobile net has to train another neural network, a so-called UNet, which is also a fast neural network. But uh, given a trained mobile net and an untrained UNet, we can significantly reduce the amount of training data that we need because the mobile net already has some knowledge about the world. It knows things. And uh, we just need to train, based on this knowledge, we just need to train the unit to recognize exactly the pixels that need to be segmented and the pixels that don't need to be segmented. So we can re reduce the number of training data from millions to thousands of images that we need. But we still need thousands of images. And therefore, we used a data set called Celeb a mask HQ, and this is a data set um, where, where somebody has uh, yeah, really segmented a lot of data. So we have 35,000 images of celebrities and somebody manually handcrafted the pictures on the right side. So he took um, the images and said, here's the face, here is the hair, here are the eyes, and so on and so on. So we just need to stitch all of these together to get um, an image uh, which we can use for training the segmentation in this case. And so we did, and this is what you saw just earlier. Okay, now that we have all of this, we can now eradicate the old face. So we just take the pixels which we just um, saw and we can then eliminate those. And uh, we need to fill the void of these faces somehow. So we took a, um, a computer vision algorithm called in-painting. And with this, the void is just filled with the surroundings in some sensible way. It doesn't make sense all the time, so this doesn't look perfect. So it doesn't look like Martin is completely gone. But it doesn't have to be perfect, actually, because we just need to um, yeah, fix some ugly overlay problems. So in most cases, some, uh, somehow some pixels will shine through from the old face, and we just need to replace, replace those. And this is good enough for now. Uh, and of course, Martin is gone, so this is also a good thing. Yeah, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. OK, <laughs> good. And then we're going to go to the decoder. Jonas. Yeah. we've pretty much talked about everything that has nothing to do with deep fakes <laughs> or the, the deep neural network behind it. So we still had to do some changes about that one as well. If you remember, we wanted to, do, uh, to make a deep fake that works basically on every single person that stands in front of the camera. And at the same time, Thomas mentioned training neural networks is tedious, and we didn't want to do that. We're lazy, so we decided, can we maybe uh, have some shortcuts in between? And yeah, you can see our solution is, we don't just have two different autoencoders. We have n autoencoders for n faces, which means now we can train the Harald Lesh, the Dirk Steffens, the Drakenlord, and everyone else that we want to train at the same time, which saves a lot of time. And the nice side effect of that is now that the uh, encoder has kind of seen so many different faces, it kind of manages really well to break down even new faces down to that latent space representation that we saw before. So we kind of reached both of our goals at the same time. But one thing that became kind of apparent was we changed so much about the entire system that the task became more and more hard for the neural network. And we ended up with results like this. So 
I mean, I was quite happy that we removed Martin earlier. Now we have Martin with an eye on his forehead, so that's what we get in return. Or here's some, some kind of Picasso painting. We also have <laughs> Donald Trump with a mouth on his forehead, because apparently he doesn't have enough already. <laughs> we have man, bear, pig, I suppose. I don't even know what that kind of alien is, and... Yeah, we, we kind of saw, now with the, all the adapter training objectives that the neural network had, it was kind of a bit overwhelmed by the task. So we thought it might be a good idea to just kind of help it a little bit with so-called GAN training. And GAN training looks like the following. Now we don't only have just one autoencoder, but we have two competing networks. That's what GAN stands for, Generative Adversarial Networks. So now we have our autoencoder, which we'll call in this example the generator and we have a so-called discriminator. And what basically happens is the discriminator is supposed to differentiate between real faces that we can take from our data set and the ones that are generated by the autoencoder. And has to tell whether those are real or fake. And we train it on exactly that objective. And at the same time, we want kind of the generator to generate faces that look real to the discriminator. And by doing this, we kind of created this beautiful loop of loss functions where each network is kind of dependent on each other. And they start from basically nothing, and they learn everything as they go. And in the end, we get quite nice deep fakes such as these. We'll just start the demo. Martin, do you want to do us a favor? Just standing here. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Let's just change our faces around. And while we do that, you can see <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so this is a deep fake of my face, actually. I can also, we can also put Thomas here. Uh, the lighting conditions obviously are not ideal, but if you can take away anything from this, then it's that it, it kind of works in real time. Thomas, move a bit closer, please. Yeah, that yeah, looks that's good. That's good. beautiful. You can see it's not perfect. That was kind of our first attempt, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And you can see you can also switch genders, you can switch ages, you can basically be anyone you want to be. So far, so good. Okay. What happened with all of this, Martin? Yeah, um, so uh, when we published uh, our first real-time implementation of deepfakes, there was something going on. So there was were press articles and there were TV teams making some news about it. And uh, of course, as we already told you, we wanted to give talks about that, so to create awareness. So while we were at a computer science night or something like that, um, some people of the German television uh, uh, ZDF, uh, ZDF uh, they came over and asked us, uh, is it possible that you can create real-time deepfakes for our science show? And so we uh, said, yes. We want to do that, um, but then Corona came, and uh, so we had a lot of uh, spare time <laughs> um, to improve our real-time deepfakes. So, as you already noticed, they were not really photorealistic. So, when we have a look to this short video here, you can see myself um, yeah, filming in front of the real-time deepfakes. Um, I look a bit like Obama. And yeah, what can you see? So the edges around the head, they are not ideal. Uh, so also the texture of my skin looks uh, uh, very unsharp. And um, there are some distortions in the face as well. And regarding uh, the, the hair, it's OK. Because um, we both are somehow bald. but. Let's have a look if I try to look like Donald Trump in this case. You can recognize that the deep neural network tries to, um, to, to take the hair and to fit it and to stretch it onto my bald, which doesn't look that good. Yeah. And what we can say, the quality was not that good. Uh, regarding the hair, let's say we want to look like Einstein with short if I have short hair or bald, uh, the idea was, yeah, why not wearing uh, uh, a toupee and uh, to get rid of this problem, but it's, it's not really good. And this brings us now to the next thing, pushing deepfakes to the limit. 
where we want to tell you how we solved all these problems. So I think it's Jonas who introduced us to TensorFlow 2 right now. Yes, so we obviously noticed there's definitely some things that we can improve here. So it was back to the drawing board, back to just rewriting everything. And the big issue that we had previously is our solution so far was written in plain Keras based on basically the uh, Deep Face Lab implementation. And if you've ever worked with Keras, then you know it's really easy to build something that's quite simple. But when you start having something like a GAN where the loss function is dependent on another neural network that you don't want to train at the same time, this becomes really hard and you start kind of working against the API. We thought, OK, let's just rewrite the entire trainer in TensorFlow. And at that time, TensorFlow 2 came out. And that was quite handy for us, because TensorFlow and Keras, they get, a well, uh, get along quite well. So Keras is the preferred front end for TensorFlow 2, so that you can do all of your simple stuff. And if you want to do more complex stuff, then you can use TensorFlow Core to do that, for example, for GANs. And we did th just that. We could easily port our code from Keras to TensorFlow 2, because most of the code was interchangeable. And we used that to then, first of all, well, basically rebuild everything that we had, but with the TensorFlow 2 code base. And this had a couple of neat side effects. One of them was, well, for example, our data loader got quite a lot faster, was not a, a, a bottleneck anymore. And for that reason, the training also became quite a lot faster. And also, just having TensorFlow now being able to play around with um, guns much more easily, we could simply play around with um, losses and um, discriminators. And um, we want to show you now how such a training would look like. Because remember, we have a gun. I briefly brushed over it. But we really want to make sure that you understand it. So now we're going to do something that we call an offline role play game. So we're go basically going to show you how such a GAN works. And remember, GAN, it's kind of a fight between a generator and a discriminator. Fight. OK. All right. For our little offline role play game, we still need some roles, of course. And yeah. this is, um, I'm going to be the moderator, I think. Okay, so, yeah. um, Jonas, do you want to be uh, the generator in this case? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be oh, the yeah. yeah, I think you'll be the generator. You'll yeah. be a good generator. I'm good at generating things. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Martin, you'll be the discriminator then. Yeah, what else? This, this what is can I do especially that? fine because we prepared some uh, training I'm, I'm data. I'm always set. discriminating him, so it's <laughs> fine. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. So I prepared a good data set for you. Okay. okay. So, um, discriminator, you'll have to look away now. And okay. uh, also uh, cover your ears, please. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, doesn't hear us. Okay, uh, so, dear generator, so can you switch over to the next slide? Yeah. Round one, fight! Okay, so what I have for you here is a picture of Martin, actually. So, have you seen Martin uh, before? I'm a completely untrained neural network. How, what, what is a Martin? Okay, have you I seen... Uh, I've, I've literally never seen anything. Like, what is this even? Okay. Uh, okay. Well, just, what should uh, I do? Just, 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 just try to do it. Uh, you, like, you'll be fine. Try to, to draw whatever that is. Yeah. Tr okay. Try to recreate that. Well, okay. So you got to know I'm a completely newly initialized neural network. All my weights and biases are, let's say, random. Um, I've never seen anything at all. And I don't even know what my task is, really, because I don't understand it. So I'll just do whatever a, nearly, a new, newly initialized net does. And that's, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just kind of, I don't know. We'll just do some, some white noise here. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good, isn't it? OK. What, what yeah. do you say? You'll go with that? Yeah, yeah. OK. Okay, uh, beautiful, really beautiful. Okay, uh, dear discriminator, you yeah. can have a look now. So okay. Have you seen one of these pictures before? No. No, no. <laughs> okay. What shall I do? Uh, you shall now say which one of those yeah. is real and which one is created by our generator. Holy fuck. Okay. 
so as I'm a completely new, newly initialized neural network, all my weights and biases, they have default values right now, and I, I would randomly pick, uh, um, I would say, left is right. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. This is, oh. Huh. Oh. It is not. So, oh. What would you learn from that? Wow, okay. Hmm. I'm a bit disappointed right now. Yeah, okay, so what do I learn from it? So, to be honest, the left side, on, on, on the correct picture, there are some, I would say, maybe connected lines and stuff, and, uh, um, it, yeah, connected lines, and uh, the, the, there's also, there's some white stuff, and then there's some black stuff here or so, and twice, and, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. generator. Maybe, yeah. Have you listened to Martin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can lines. also learn from that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so discriminator, okay. please go to your corner again, <laughs> close your eyes and ears. And um, now we're going to go to round two. Round two. Fight! So the challenge is now the same as last time, but generator, you have learned something. Yeah, yeah, connected lines, right? Yes. Uh, uh, he also said like some white stuff, so, so yeah, I think that the rest is white, right? Okay. I think it's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> what do you say? Uh, Again, beautiful. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, Let, let's see what, what, what the discriminator says. Okay. Discriminator? Yeah. You can ha now have a look at the pictures again. So, that the generator yeah. said there were, yeah. would be some connected lines, so uh, I think there are. That looks much better, I would say. So I can see connected lines, it's black and white, but, okay, hmm, I would say the, 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 the left one is the right one. Why? Why? Um, I, I learned a bit more than that because there is, there's maybe some other colors and ah, stuff. Okay. Okay, let's Colors, see. Yeah. All right, you were right this time. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's working. It's ah, working. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. All right, uh, and now we're doing this for several thousands of iterations and iterations and iterations. And at some point, we are ending up with round three. Discriminator, mm. go to your corner, please. Round three. Fight! Right, so at this point, I kind of know what to do. Like, I've learned. Well, colors are important, so let's just let's just start with like a big mountain of flesh, right? That looks like Martin, kind of, doesn't it? Okay, what 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 else do we need? I'll take your suggestions. I think. A, hmm. Oh, let's say let's say let's let's put in a mouth, shall we? Like a big fat grin. That uh, kind of looks like a mouse now. Let's give him some eyes, right? Yeah, look, and we even got like the shoulders and everything. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so okay, Martin. let's have Martin have a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so which one is Oh the my <laughs> god. It's pretty I close. I saw eh? so many faces while it's my training. It, it's, I cannot distinguish between both pictures. It's, it's exactly it's the same. It's not possible for me yeah. because both they have eyes, they have connected lines, there's color in it. Also the background, it's amazing. Okay. Sorry, I cannot at, distinguish. At this point, we are now finished because we have now perfectly real deepfakes and we can uh, now go on. <laughs> All right. But... That was not everything. So we had created our uh, deepfake training pipeline in TensorFlow 2, but there were still some issues, and you'll see those later. So we had bumped up the resolution because our neural networks also became a little bit faster, but we still had a couple of issues. We had distortions in the face, the same ones that we had previously. We hadn't really solved that problem at all with that. We had like some alignment problems. We didn't make sure that the face was always kind of centrally in the camera. We also had, well, centering issues. And 
the performance itself of the entire pipeline that we ran the deep fakes in was also improvable because that was still the old one. And you can see that right here. It's, we, we showed off our deep fakes at the Fujitsu World Forum in 2019, and you can see it's running with like, I'd say a cinematic frame rate of like two frames per second-ish. And you can see we have a couple of different people all featuring the same deep fake. And it looks quite different depending on who you're looking at. And with glasses, everything breaks. And it was just like a horrible mess. So obviously, we had to do something about performance and also about kind of making sure that the faces that we put into our autoencoder are a little bit more centralized. And that's where MediaPipe uh, came in. And what is that, Thomas? Yep. In early uh, 2021, we got to know a library called MediaPipe. And MediaPipe yeah, <laughs> deals with all kind of camera and uh, video input, and it can uh, be used for several use cases, actually. It provides some ready-to-use solutions, which you can use out of the box, uh, like face mesh, but also uh, pose estimation and things like that. It is a build once, deploy anywhere solution, so you can use it on, on your browser using JavaScript, but also in your Python environments. And it offers end-to-end -end acceleration, which means that it is quite blazingly fast, even if for complex tasks. And it's also free and open source, we, so we can use it right away. And now let's have a look at the most interesting aspect for us, and this was the face landmark detection using uh, face mesh and um, you can see it here so it looks quite good what it does is it uses a, a, an algorithm called blaze face to do face detection and uh, this is done at an amazing speed and on top of that it, it builds um, a so-called uh, face um, landmark mesh and uh, this you can see in the next screen, it has 468 landmark points in the face, uh, which also de depict things like the nose, but also mouth and, and eyes. And it can then recreate a 3D image from a 2D, as a 3D face mesh from a 2D image, because it has some contextual knowledge about the world. If you want to know more about it, uh, you can scan the QR code on the right side, and uh, there you will, will find some papers about it. Okay. And then uh, what is also built in is temporal consistency. So if you cover your head with your hands, um, then it can detect that this is uh, just uh, something that is uh, in front of your head and it will not break down immediately. So this is also quite good. And um, what it also features is yeah, ethnical diversity. So it was trained on different data sets from all across the globe. So you can use it um, for every person that stands in front of your TV screen. Uh, so this will make no difference at all. OK. And now let's have a look at the demo here. Mm -hmm. So we can just uh, start the demo, which will take a little bit of time. Um, and it started already. And here you can see the face mesh. So <laughs> there are the 468 points across Martin's face. Um, maybe you can go a little bit closer to the camera. OK. And as you can see, um, the points stay pretty much at the same location where they should be. And you can also see the amazing speed of it. So this runs really in real time. OK. okay. Perfect. So now that we have that, Let's have a look at the inference workflow. Jonas. Yeah, so what we did is basically write the entire inference pipeline again from scratch, starting with retrieving a frame, which is still happening on the CPU. Then we do uh, our face or our media pipe face mesh, face detection uh, on the CPU as well. And what happens after that is we do the same old face segmentation. We do a new uh, adaptation of the inpainting and also the actual deep fake all of that in one big fat GPU pipeline, which runs really, really fast. So we can achieve up to, well, 30 frames per second uh, on 1080p for one face, which is really good, actually. And uh, we are going to have a look at how exactly that looks like in uh, an example right now. So you can see 
Um, yeah, we have Harald Lesch on the, on the left, and in the middle you can see how it looks with the face mesh applied, and then in full effect when we apply, for example, a deep fake of Putin. And you can see, compared to the first version that we had, the resolution is quite a lot higher. The, um, yeah, you, we don't get those weird distortions that we had, and even though we only had very limited training data here for Vladimir Putin, the resolution is, or the, the quality itself is quite good. And what we want to do now is just show you a live demo mm -hmm, of uh, our final deepfake, the one, the new one. And this is going to take a while because we have to load all of the models before we do that. Um, if you want to check it out, we have our booth down there. We're going to have, well, have to take this entire desktop PC with us downstairs. And then we're going to be up and running, uh, showcasing the deepfakes for you to try out uh, today and basically tomorrow. And um, yeah, so yeah, one more thing. If there's any questions for the audience watching us on the interwebs, feel free to ask your questions in, what was it called? Rocket, I think, Rocket. Okay. Okay, it's still initializing, so. Well, well let's see. If mm. it doesn't work, then you can just come downstairs and we'll <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> let's see. Now we have the same thing as last time, so maybe we just restart the process. Yeah, we have a <laughs> deadlock. It happens. You know, it's, it's quite a bit of work to stream a demo into like a slide set. We don't really want to talk about how we're doing it because we're not <laughs> proud of it. Um, let's see. Nah, that's not working. Can't open yeah, oh camera well, I think index. Yeah, okay. yeah, you just come downstairs and yeah. you'll see the entire thing. Yeah. Anyways, okay. what can we do with this now? What can we do with this now? This is the question. Okay, let's go to the topic of video calls with deepfakes. So there was another uh, German television um, channel named Pro7, and they have the science show uh, Galileo. And they visited us, and uh, they had the idea um, to to make an experiment, a social experiment. So. And let's introduce, uh, next slide please. And the idea behind that was on the left side you can see Haro Füllgrabe, and on the right side um, Matthias Fiedler. And next slide please. And the idea was that Haro Füllgrabe should sit in front of a camera in a Zoom meeting. The camera signal goes through our real-time deepfake process and in the Zoom session, he will be Matthias Fiedler. So with this setup, he's calling a friend of Matthias Fiedler and trying to convince him to, to do things. And let's have a look to the following video. Ruhig. Das Live-Deepfake-Experiment beginnt. Fliegt Haro hier als Matthias auf? Hallo, Richard! Du glaubst gar nicht, was hier alles los ist. Die Leitung stimmt nicht. Dann geht das in die Hose und das geht in die Hose und das klappt nicht. Die erste Hürde ist geschafft. Der Chatpartner schöpft keinen Verdacht. Dann gehen wir einen Schritt weiter. Haro alias Matthias schickt ihm eine Datei. Sein Gegenüber öffnet das Dokument ohne zu zögern. Gefährlich. Im Fall eines echten Betrugs könnte es sich um einen Virus handeln. Richard tappt in die Falle. Hast du es bekommen? Jetzt habe ich es bekommen. Funktioniert der live die fake sogar so gut, dass wir den Chatpartner dazu bringen, dem Spendenaufruf zu folgen und Geld zu überweisen? So, the question is... Did he transfer money? Yes or no? What do you think? Yeah. Yes? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Definitely. So, um, and this, Thomas, you want to say something? Uh, okay, okay. So, and this brings us to uh, the different attack vectors uh, deepfakes can uh, um, be used for in the future and also nowadays. So, of course, phishing scams, data breaches, hoaxes, celebrity brawn. Reputation scamming, whatever you think. Election manipulation, identity theft. And if you think that's not true, so this 
was only one experiment. But also in the news, for example, you can stumble upon such headlines like woman thought Wind Diesel loved her. Bam! 5,000 British pounds in online scam. They're just away. And, but what happens if you try to fraud your parents? Will this work? Yeah, that's what we're going to find out now because we have part two and there Haru Fögrabe is trying to fool not a friend of Matthias Fiedler, but the parents. Wieder wird Kollege Haru als Matthias in den Videochat gehen. Wird es auch diesmal klappen? Hey, Papi! Hey, Matthias. Hallo, Dude! Bist du schick, Junge? <lacht> Ja, aber Schätzchen, was ist denn mit den Kindern los? Den geht's super. Ich bin halt gerade bei der Arbeit. Aber den geht's gut. Alles perfekt. In den ersten zwei Minuten merkt keiner etwas. Aber dann wird Matthias Mutter plötzlich stutzig. Mein Gesicht ist so fremd. Sie merkt, dass hier etwas nicht stimmt. Seht ihr mich doppelt? Bist du das? Da, das, das bin ich. Du hast ja erkannt, dass ich das nicht bin, oder? Ja, du sahst ganz fremd aus. Ich sehe durchs Telefon, wie es dir geht. <lacht> <lacht> tschüss, Danke, bis bald. Ciao. Liebe so, as you can see, you cannot fool everybody. And uh, there are things that you can consider that might help you detecting deepfakes. And one of the most important things is, of course, suspicious behavior. If somebody does not f uh, behave the way he normally does, that might be a sign of a deepfake. But there are also some technical things, like low level of skin details, so or your face looks strange, um, unusual distortions, as we already had, the lack of emotion, and um, artifacts that you can see around the head, but also uh, inconsistent noise or audio, because we don't have any audio deepfakes at the moment. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the voice that would not be really the same as you would talk to the real person, um, but also unnatural coloring, eye movement, facial expression, and all of these things. And uh, one area where deepfakes are not that good at the moment is hair and teeth. So you have to have a look at them especially. But these are just current considerations. So deepfakes in half a year might be completely different to what we know today. And therefore, always look out for the suspicious behavior, because this will stay the same. OK. Yeah, this brings us to audio deepfakes. Let's John, have a look late. to this video. Yeah, I was beginning to worry about you. If you hurry home, we can sit down and have dinner together. I'm making beef stew. Something's wrong. She's never this nice. John? John, honey, it's late. Please don't make me worry. Can I already be there? Honey, are you okay? I'm right here. I'm fine. Are you sure? Are you sure you're all right? What's the dog's name? Max. Hey, Janelle. What's wrong with Wolfie? I can hear him barking. Is he okay? Wolfie's fine, honey. Wolfie's just fine. What are you? Your foster parents are dead. Arnold Schwarzenegger, here as the Terminator. He was doing social engineering with audio deepfakes, obviously. So the question is, can we do that nowadays? Back in the days in 2018, they say there were headlines like, AI could make cyber attacks more dangerous, harder to detect. And then it was in uh, 2019, just one year later, and fraudsters were able to deepfake the CEO voice and they were able to trick a manager and two, uh, $240,000 were transferred and they were just away. They were gone. And how can you nowadays fake voices? Is it possible? Yes, you can. Yes, and you can. a beautiful thing that is called Tacotron 2. That's also the one that you'll have, for example, in your Google Assistant. And the fun thing is you can train it to basically mimic any kind of voice that you want to have. And what we want to do now is we want to make a social experiment with you guys. Yes. Well, we're going to play you a couple of clips and you're going to tell us, is that a bot, is that Tacotron, or is that the real Terminator? Yeah. So turn up the volume, please, and, and we'll drop the bass. Positive thinking can be contagious. So, is this a real voice? Positive thinking can be contagious. Or is it a 
Audio deepfake. What do you think? Audio deepfake? Positive thinking can be contagious. Okay. okay. So we solved that. It's definitely a fake. Okay. Another example. The more you temper a sword, the stronger it becomes. Fake? The more you temper a sword, the stronger it becomes. The more you temper a sword, the stronger it becomes. So this, is, this, this isn't a deep fake here, right? So this was uh, um, a, a real audio taken from a video. Don't ask me why he's uh, holding a sword in the hand. So, um, <laughs> but there are things going on. So, Jonas? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this was kind of obvious. We had. A Tacotron that kind of recreated Arnold Schwarzenegger, it, it kind of had like an Austrian sounding accent, but to most of you it was quite obvious that he was, uh, when he was a deep fake and when he was not a deep fake. But this becomes quite a lot harder when you have a voice that you don't know from like pop culture. And let's have a listen. Dirty Bomb, a nuclear weapon improvised from radioactive nuclear waste material and conventional explosives. Who thinks this is real? Or who thinks this is fake? Okay, fake ones first. Okay, mm -hmm. now those who think it is real. <laughs> well, <laughs> they don't trust you. They, they don't trust us no, anymore. I think. No, so <laughs> so it's actually a fake, and this is something that's done by 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 Tacotron too, and it's quite impressive because it's it's really hard to tell. And you can probably most of you voted for fake because you had like this bias in your head, thinking that everything is fake that we're going to show you, but. The big thing that we have here is, unfortunately, these audio deepfakes cannot be done in real time. Whenever you say something, whenever you have audio, you have a temporal context that goes over yeah, maybe a second or so that you simply don't have if you're doing a video deepfake frame by frame. So this is definitely gonna, not going to be something that we're going to see in live videos just yet. What's the conclusion to all of this? Yeah, let's have a look. So. As you can see, there is a lot going on in the fields of deepfakes, starting in 2017 with Deep Face Lab, just replacing faces with doing post-processing in this case, up to do the stuff in real time nowadays. Deep Face Lab can also replace whole heads nowadays, but it's still post-processing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In 2019, when we held our first talk about real-time deepfakes. This is a new version you just uh, 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 listened today. We said that deepfakes will be used in the movie industry. This was, was our prediction. And the question is, does this come true? Here you can see how the old way is to realize deepfakes. So you can see that there is an actor and there is a special uh, a camera lighting and uh, things to do, so the CGI, doing CGI effects, and it's really expensive. They recreate a 3D model of the, of the head, and then they are faking the stuff. And now we want to watch a short video snippet where one part is CGI and the other one is the deepfake version. And your task is to to guess which one is the deep fake and which one is the CGI, uh, CGI I give my version. Life to protect the child. But he will not be safe until he masters his abilities. Igor, that's who you belong with. He's one of your kind. I'll see you again. I promise. So, the left version was the original, and the right version was the deepfake version. What is the difference between both? The price. Definitely the price tag. And our predictions came true. Lucasfilm just hired this YouTuber, this deepfaker, generating these deepfakes. And, uh, yeah, isn't that amazing? I would say yes. So, if you are... Now we are at the end of our deepfake talk, and if you are interested in more AI-related talks, 
Uh, yeah, just photograph uh, these QR codes and then you get a talk about style transfer. And the real-time deepfakes uh, version one we um, yeah, hold back in the days. And you can try the style transfer and the real-time deepfakes at our booth on your own. So feel free and come by. Yep. And now we have one minute left exactly for okay. questions from the web. One question. <laughs> Everyone else can ask us just down at the booth, but I think we'll give one to the web if okay, that's possible. possible. Cool. How would we get that? Okay. We, we make two questions, okay? All right. So you're on a video call with someone and you think it's not them. What do you ask them to do to prove that it's not a fake? So that's a very tough question. One thing that you could definitely do for our implementations is just be like, OK, hold your hand in front of your face, because then uh, face mesh will break and everything else will break. And that's pretty straightforward. However, there's going to be technical solutions to that. So I mean, it's really down to all of the things that we uh, said you should do. Just look out for unusual behavior. And if something is kind of fishy, suspicious, or look out for some other ways that this person can authenticate itself. Uh, am I okay to go? Next question, yeah. Uh, yeah, so obviously social engineering is a concern, uh, but if you're speaking to people you know quite well, uh, there'll be idiosyncrasies in the way they say things uh, or, or move that you'll identify quite often. It's part of the reason why I think quite a lot of us guessed the the, the audio was a deep fake because uh, there was slight, the, the speed between the words was slightly unnatural right. sometimes. Um, but my concern is for biometric security, uh, for like phones uh, looking at your face to unlock it, for example. That's presumably quite easily hackable now if you can do a deep fake. So um, it, it, do you know if they got any plans to like combat that as part of the face detection? Well, there's kind of two questions in one here. So one's the voice thing, and the other one's biometric. I'll start with biometric. Um, so for most phones that you have nowadays, you have like some kind of depth sensor in there, some, some LiDAR or uh, what's it called, time of flight sensor, that's going to give you additional depth information. And then it's also kind of baked into like a very low hardware OS level. So that's kind of making it secure. for you. Of course, if you have like a Windows Hello that works via a webcam, you can perfectly deep fake that. That's no problem at all. Um, then for the audio cues, it's kind of interesting, because you saw in our social experiment that we had a completely different pe person that doesn't even have the voice at all, uh, convincingly fake somebody else. And we, we noticed that when people see a familiar face, they just tend to forget everything else and just not be critical and just be like, OK, I guess that's his voice now. And <laughs> it's kind of shocking to, to if, when you know that, that as soon as you see something that you believe, your mind just wants to believe it as well. So that's going to be something to look out for. And with that, it's okay, I think we have, well, the live showcase of deepfakes now once again working. Thomas did some live stage hacking, so give him a hand. And with that, thanks for your attention, and we're out. Yeah, passt. So, jetzt machst du das nicht mit den Mimiken, das ist. And um, maybe we show a face with hair. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that's for example, this for example, and now let's try it. So with my bold, so Thomas, uh, hör, so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, now you can see uh, this works much better than the um, example you just saw with the Donald Trump and with my face. And uh, this was also a an, an, uh, huge improvement realizing deepfakes 2.1. Yeah. So far, that's it. Time's up. If you have any questions, come to our booth, try it on your own, ask your questions, feel invited, and stay healthy. Bye-bye.